Bhattacharya's talk. And uh, so to give a brief introduction, uh, he's presently a consultant at tissue agnostics working in the area of cellular molecular biology. And he has got extensive experience in the area of tumor cell biology with uh, more of uh, optical microscopes. And he has worked a lot around in and around the field of high resolution microscopy, namely, and also with the confocal and super resolution microscopic techniques. And uh, with this uh, very small and brief introduction, sir, I welcome you to this Landic session. Uh, the, uh, the desk is open to you. Sir, can you unmute yourself, sir? You're muted. With the microphone on, mute, mute. Uh, yes. Sir, unmute. Okay, okay. Are you being able to see this slide? Uh, we are able to see your screen, sir. Uh, maybe, uh, yeah, we can just... Then can you see? Video. Can you see the slide? No, sir, not yet. I, we uh, we can see your screen, sir, right now. Oh, okay, okay. I think I'll have to select uh, my entire screen. Is it any problem, sir? No, I'm just. Or you want us to share uh, your slides, sir? We can do that if it is okay for if it is uh, you are facing some problem, we can do that. Are you being able to see the slide now? Yes, yes, sir. You can just uh, go for slideshow, sir. We will be able to yeah. do it in a The slideshow may not work. Uh, yes. I changed the slide. Is it changing? Yes, yes, yes. Completely okay. fine, sir. You can go ahead. Uh, Thank you, sorry sir. for the delay. Uh, mine is a, a 10 minute vendor presentation, I think, I guess. So I work for this uh, company called Tissue mm. Uh which, as you see uh, from the name, it is about to do with tissue analysis. So today, what I'm going to talk to you about is the essential technology which the company pursues, which it calls it by the name of TissueFax. And TissueFax is a, a bioinformatics, a bioimage informatics approach to the cellular analysis of tissues. So this is a kind of an extension of what Dr. Manjiri has just spoke. And uh, but so I'll just give you a little background of what the thing technology is about and then what the company's technology is about and its product. So what is bioimage informatics? Uh, we can understand that this is being informatics. It is uh, therefore a branch of data science and therefore also a branch of bioinformatics. The question is, is only is that, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I think I... Yes, can you see? Uh, yeah, it's going on. Are we able to see the slide? Hello? Okay. So, 
so therefore only uh, in, it's a branch of bioinformatics but only the the we are used to a certain kind of data from biology and that is let's say for example genomics but in this case this data is coming from biological images and therefore uh, strictly they can be either uh, you know a biological image of, of, of a macro uh, organ uh, like the uh, like the lung a ct scan or it could be a tissue image but the way bioimage informatics has been practiced till now it has been based on images of microscopy so therefore uh, it is uh, the all its its uh, the data is microscopy image based and it is a combination of bioinformatics and and uh, computational biology it focuses on the use of computational techniques to analyze bioimages in this case microscopy images especially cellular and morphological images at large scale meaning these could be very large uh, images of the brain for example high throughput uh, meaning either uh, the sample number uh, is very high that you can you can look at a number of specimens or it could also be that the data throughput the, the number of parameters that you look per specimen is also very high the goal is to obtain useful knowledge out of complicated and heterogeneous images images and biological images especially are very heterogeneous and related metadata so uh, the whole subject the question is what is the subject of bioinformatics uh, as a, as a discipline as i said it is belonging currently right now to focused on microscopy images and because microscopy images are 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 very heterogeneous and complicated there is a huge amount of data which is generated image data in this case and therefore the, there are issues of and the subject is is also about about actually data image data management building up an image uh, repository ontologies annotation of images online on a cloud computer and to analyze using machine learning techniques uh, particularly very much deep learning and uh, so it's about image analysis and visualization of the image and of the of of, of data that's how the field is in practice this field kind of started off uh, in, uh, in around 2005 when small groups in universities and research institutes started small meetings on bioimage informatics and then since 2010 the ismb conference has had a section devoted to bioimaging and data visualization and from 2012 the journal bioinformatics started a section on bioimage informatics <clears throat> now tissues are spatial heterogeneous now the question therefore is if one has to do data analysis what should be the roi like now, because there is spatial heterogeneity the roi should be as small as, uh, as possible and therefore you can therefore do justice to heterogeneity itself but then is it relevant is it really relevant to go very small how relevant is it is to go in terms of the uh, roi size uh, for analysis now so we see on the left hand side we see a tissue and on the right hand side we are seeing that the same tissue has been actually arbitrarily broken up into geometrically equal spaces now if i actually zoom it up uh, therefore we see that these are very regular shapes now these shapes are and sizes are not by bio making biological relevance because when we look at cells we find that cells have shapes and sizes which are different from each other they are not regular they are irregular they have a native shape and a native size which is there so therefore we have to address this problem it in, wherein wherein we collect data from single cells in a tissue but in a way which is biologically relevant so this is exactly what the subject of cytometry is about cytometry is about collecting data from single cells and from each cell multiple parameters and for taking data from all cells in a system or in a tissue section now we are familiar with the name of cytometry because it is synonymous with flow cytometry but flow cytometry has been about cells which are natively in suspension like blood but what about cells which are organized spatially like a tissue then we can't use the approach of flow cytometry we have to use something where we don't break up the the uh, the tissue and we we lose information we lose spatial information there and therefore the subject of, of tissue cytometry came in doing the same thing of trying to identify single cells in situ in a section and do a multi parameter right now a 30 color parameter parameter analysis 
and, uh, and typically do the kind of analysis which flow cytometry does. So therefore, tissue cytometry will typically, and a natural resource consists of a workflow which will involve multiplex staining, which is not mentioned in this figure, multiplexed imaging uh, of, of all these, you know, the various parameters which have been stained with different dyes to, to do a cytometric analysis to find out what populations and subpopulations of cells are there and then to do a spatial analysis that these populations and populations were all in the tissue of the lie and where they lie, what are the local uh, interactions and what are what is the spatial uh, distribution, things like cell density, number of cells per unit area in a particular um, uh, area of the tissue. <clears throat> So tissue facts, therefore, is trying to uh, bring in the approach of facts, flow cytometry, to tell the tissue, of, uh, to tell the story of a tissue. Now, here specimens uh, can be stained either with bright field stains like like hematoxylin uh, and H and, and E, hematoxylin and eosin, or with dab or with fluorescence. So we can do cytometric analysis with both, and then. Uh, once you get the, the cytometric analysis, that is, you get to know what cell numbers are there, what types are there, what numbers are of, what different types of uh, cells have, what numbers are they present in, then we do the spatial analysis of where they are present and what is their spatial statistical uh, uh, distributions. So the workflow will consist of multiplex staining, whole slide imaging, identification of single cells in situ, doing a cytometric analysis, doing a tissue classification to know what histological cell types are there, if it is skin, to know where is the epidermis, where is the dermis, to integrate the cyto cytometric data along with the tissue classification data and then to do a special analysis. And thereby we know that we, if we have a subpopulation in which part of the whole uh, image and therefore in the tissue does it lie. Now we had we had in my earlier slide I had asked the question how small should the area be for analysis? We know now that, that the, for analysis it should be a small size, but the size should be biologically relevant and therefore the size of that of a of a cell. But in terms of data acquisition, how what should be this the specimen size or what should be the ROI size? Therefore, it should be as big as possible if you are doing a cytometric analysis because cytometry is about looking at cell numbers and certain populations of cells can have very small numbers. So to be able to pick up sufficient cell numbers, we should analyze, we should acquire data from as big a section as possible. Therefore, the subject of whole slide imaging. And therefore, it doesn't suit uh, other imaging methods like tissue microarray, which take up only small portions, circular portions of such a tissue, because there the cell number gets, gets limited. Once you have taken an image, the question is now to identify in C2 these the single cells. And that is identified by, uh, by using a nuclear stain. The tissue had been stained by, it is a prerequisite, that the tissue is stained with a nuclear stain, whereas the DNA gets the nucleus, uh, I mean, the, uh, gets stained. And then using a watershed uh, deep learning algorithm, the, the whole morphology of the, of the cell is, is worked out. And therefore, as you see in the picture uh, below, you see that actually the true morphology gets uh, built up and it is not a geometrical figure imposed. Otherwise, it will lead to wrong estimations of, of cell number. Now, let's look at some case examples. So we have this colon cancer, uh, colon tissue here, sorry, which has been uh, labeled with hematoxylin. We need to label all the nuclei to determine the cell number. So we have hematoxylin which stains the nucleus. And in some nuclei, we find the Ki67 antigen, which has been picked up by, by Ki67 DAB. Now the question is that, uh, you know, how many of the blue nuclei are having, uh, or what percentage of the, of the nuclei are, are having the Ki67 antigen? The, the, this, this data can be de determined as we see in the, in the figure here below, where each dot here comes from uh, a single cell here. But interestingly, let's look at the next slide. Now, this is a slide which is very commonly given to, to anatomists, you know, tissue anatomists, histologists and histopathologists. And histopathologists were given to estimate visually, and this is a common practice there, of what percentage of cells were case positive, the number varied from 1% to 
to 40%, a huge num variation number. In our in this quantitative world of data science, this sounds uh, very, very, uh, you know, uh, very weird. And therefore, when uh, the tissue fat system uh, took it, uh, it was a precise, uh, you know, a data collection machine, and it gave the figure of 14.54%. Now, this figure obviously is going to be um, you know, observer independent, uh, and and it will give the same value wherever it is taken. And if the, the machine's accuracy is right, it will give the right value. So this kind of sub uh, analysis brings in quantitation to 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 anatomy, to pathology, to translational uh, pathology, and to diagnostics. Fluorescence in this. Uh, helps in in multiplexing in being able to look at multiple molecular targets instead of the one molecular target which uh, which we did in the last slide and in this case we have DAPI to look at the nucleus and therefore to actually identify uh, the uh, the cells and we can see that the cells have been identified by green boundaries uh, in the in the picture and then we have these the staining with these particular antibodies CD4 CD8 Fox P3 in here now we did an analysis. We've said that okay, let's look at the the expression of CD4 and let's look at those cells with have CD4 and FITC and try to find out how many of these cells are expressing both. So on the left hand side we have pure FITC FOXP3 and on the and the x-axis we have pure CD4 CY3. The co-expressors are present in the in the upper right hand quadrant, which has been shown with the red mark. In that quadrant, we find cells uh, which are co-expressors for both FOXP3 and CD4. Now, as I told you again, each dot is coming from a single cell in the, in the image. So we find that there are co-expressors and depending, but the relative amounts of CD4, FOXP3 and CD4 are different. And therefore, they occupy different positions in that space. And therefore, they have different degrees of yellowing. But all the co-expressors gated here can be seen in the image as cells having red boundaries. If you can, if you can make that out, cells. Uh, most cells have green boundaries. Or, I mean, all the cells have green boundaries, but some cells have red boundaries, and those come from the gated co-expression region. Uh, carrying this a little further, if you want to now extend this to a more global scale to look at again the colon tissue. Here we have a colon carcinoma, wherein again we have. Uh, DAPI staining to help us identify all the single cells, and then we have cytokeratin, which is a which is a protein present in only the epithelial tissue, and you can see the epithelial tissues here in having the you know the, the blue uh, structures here, uh, finger shaped structures, and we have the stroma there, which has got many colors. You, you have all these four colors: CK plus, uh, CD4, FOXP3, red, uh, greenish, and and a little bit of white. K67. That's the stroma. In the stroma are the leukocytes. Now the question was that can I now estimate how many of the CD4 containing leukocytes which have infiltrated in the tissue, what are their numbers as a function of distance or area? That how do the numbers of CD4 leukocytes vary if one goes from the tumor margin away into the deeper into the stroma? And here in this picture here we see that the tumor tissue has been identified by the cytokeratin staining, uh, staining, sorry, and given an orange mark. And the leukocytes, CD4 leukocytes are are given are stained with are, are are represented here by red. We see that the, there's a red boundary around this uh, the orange. This uh, those are the CD4 containing leukocytes present at a distance of 25 microns away from the yellow, uh, from the orange margin. Now, the, we can now keep on estimating this number of CD4 gradually as we move away from the margin deeper into the stroma. And this is what the figure here, uh, show, uh, the slide here shows. That if we look at these numbers, these numbers, now these are shown for various antigens. CD4 happens to be one of them. It can, uh, and you see that the numbers vary and they have a particular pattern. You can either represent the data in graphical in this way, or you can represent it pictorially, as you see in the upper right hand corner, where the CD4 uh, leukocytes, depending on the distance, they have a, they have been given a color code. 
if they are present close uh, to the uh, what do you call uh, uh, to the uh, to the blue uh, tumor tissue then they are in green and as you move away from the tumor tissue into the stroma you see green then uh, you see a little greenish orange that's 50 microns red it's around 100 microns and and purple is around 150 to 200 microns the numbers are are, are very coming to a, the products of the company the company makes therefore these whole slide imaging scanners which handle both uh, bright field specimens and, and specimens stained with uh, fluorescence fluorescence can be you know if there are only a few fluorescent dyes then you have a model called tissue facts plus if you have bigger if you have uh, more fluorescent dyes then you handle uh, then you use a spectral approach and you have tissue facts spectra if you have a thick specimen, then you use tissue facts Q plus, which is a confocal. A confocal allows you to look at thick sections. And if you have many slides to look at, then there is an automatic slide loader, which you see in the other picture there. And that loads 120 slides uh, and they are imaged one after the other. Uh, and you can load them and walk away. For analysis, if your specimens are, if, if it's a bright field chain specimen, then you have a software called HistoQuest. If you have uh, a fluorescent stain specimen, then you use TissueQuest. Both HistoQuest and TissueQuest are for cytometric analysis. If you want to do the spatial analysis, then there is a software called StatiQuest. Uh, the company is uh, over 20 years uh, old, uh, funded, uh, founded in actually, sorry, the spelling mistake, founded in 2003, in headquartered in Vienna. Uh, and uh, till now, there are over 2,000 publications which have used uh, uh, products from this company. One of the machines, uh, both the hardware and the software, has both uh, has bo has CEIBD certification. And uh, the company is good in terms of its products. is reflected uh, by it has won uh, two image analysis uh, competitions, and in both of them, it has won the first prize. Fields of research, as you would understand, mainly because it is um, it is uh, uh, tissues, uh, solid tissues. It is going to be oncology because oncology is large, diagnostics uh, and decision making is largely driven uh, by histopathology analysis. And uh, the public the publications have been growing over the years. The field is also growing. And I'm like to the last slide. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for such a wonderful talk. Uh, so uh, the session is open for question answers. If you have any questions, please unmute yourself and ask. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, I'm Akhya and I'm currently a trainee at CSI or IJB. Uh, I would like to know that I saw a slide where you mentioned watershed algorithm. Yes. For image segmentation, can you say why did you choose that particular algorithm for? No, no, I'm not actually. From the, I'm actually a, a biology person originally from background and not from this. Yeah. yeah. See, uh, actually, I am using DUNET for image segmentation, so I have not worked on watershed. So, okay. that was uh, my question. Why did you choose watershed for the yeah. plotting algorithm? Actually, with IGAB, uh, we we are in discussion with uh, Dr. Vamsi and Dr. Uh, Dr. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Chaudhary. Okay, Kumar okay. okay. Are you in, in whose group are you? I'm in uh, Dr. Ritushri, ma'am. Ritushri Kukri. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be coming to IGIB and I'll get okay. an answer for that. Yeah. Okay, thank you.